Hi, and welcome to Answers News for August 21st, 2017. And today is the big event. Today is the big event, the big apocalyptic event. The whole world's going to be destroyed. This is the end of the, the end of the universe. Because of the solar eclipse. Because of the solar eclipse. I mean, this only happens once every one and a half years. Well, it, it doesn't, right? We know that solar eclipses occur all the time, all, over, the time. all over the yeah, world. It just happens but... to be unique in America. Right. This is the first one since 1979 here in the United now, States. Now, as people are coming oh. on here, and we want people to come on and do those emojis across the screen, right. and we want them to leave comments and so mm -hmm. on, but we have to confess our sins, <laughs> right? Well, it's not a sin. We're saying it outright, so we're uh, telling oh, them. So it's not a sin. <laughs> all right. We're pretending to be live. That's right. Pretending. Mm -hmm. Today. Today. Because... I wanted you to wanted see. to see the eclipse. Bodhi okay. and his family took off down That's south right. somewhere and they got all these glasses and they want to mm -hmm. see the eclipse down there in Tennessee yep. somewhere. Yep. And you want to see the eclipse. And I think in Kentucky, Eastern Standard Time, it's like 228. It's 228. And it's 92 it, point that. something percent something like of that. the sun yeah. gets covered. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've got to have special glasses. You do. So. And I thought, well, I'm going to miss out because I didn't order my glasses. I was walking in this morning and one of our staff members said, do you need a pair of glasses for the eclipse? I got an extra pair. Oh, I okay. even brought you a pair because I figured you wouldn't have a pair. <laughs> so, so here we are. So we are okay. ready. Here we got take. our glasses. All right, there. let's put the glasses yeah. on here. Ooh, there we are. So we can't see anything. I can't see anything. Which is a good thing. That means wow, they're that's, working. That's the best view of you I've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, okay. that's how it's supposed okay. to be if so you're working. What we're actually doing is recording it in the morning. That's right. And we're playing it live to our audience here mm -hmm. at the Creation Museum at the normal time of 2 right. o'clock. Mm -hmm. And you and I will be outside with, with our, our glasses, glasses on, on. Yeah, staring viewing. up at the sun. Hoping Intermittently. That, hoping we don't have the usual Midwest clouds up there. That's what I'm, yeah, I am worried about that. But NASA is live streaming it. So, so you know, we're NASA's, safe scenario. NASA's live streaming it. So anyway, so let's get on for the news okay. for today. We always put the links there at uh, the top. We pin them at the top of the comments. And we go through some of the latest news items. There are so many news items every day. I, I, it's and, hard to uh, select. It is sometimes. hard to select. But we like to give you a summary and go through these. We want you to, I'll actually, while I'm watching the eclipse, mm -hmm. I'll be monitoring the comments. So I'll actually have my phone on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so tell us where you're from, what countries you're from. Right. And uh, if you're uh, watching the uh, eclipse. If, if you're watching the eclipse, put, mm -hmm. put that down there too. And we'll run through uh, the news here. Right. As we normally do. So, so Dr. Georgia first, Purnham, over yeah. to you. Well, the first article is about, you know, the, about the solar eclipse and how when there were solar eclipses in the past, that they used to think it was some sort of sign of something. You know, they didn't understand that it was the moon passing, you know, its shadow, so to speak, over the, um, passing between the earth and the sun. And so they used to think it was a forewarning because the sun would be blocked out. I mean, if you didn't understand that, I mean, what would you think that it was a warning sign that something bad was going to happen? But We've advanced further than that, and we understand better what it is, but nonetheless, there are still people oh, yeah, that think it's a sign of something There's a bad. lot of things on the internet saying, right. you know, this is an apocalyptic event, mm -hmm. it's a sign of the end of the age, or there's going to be judgment, yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Dr. Denny Faulkner, our astronomer, he's actually out in Colorado. Is he in Colorado? I uh, thought he was in Oregon. Oh, maybe Oregon. <laughs> he's oh, he's out there out somewhere. West. Yeah, I think it is Oregon. Okay. He's out there standing on a mountain. Humming. Getting ready. No. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the eclipse, <laughs> taking photographs, awesome. no doubt. Uh, but uh, he actually wrote a blog all about mm -hmm. the eclipse. And he's written some articles. He's right. written articles on other partial eclipses, uh -huh. too, because every time there's some event like this or an alignment of planets, people come up with people all these. People think it's the end times. The end or, times. Yeah. We've got to remember the Bible says no one, no one knows. knows the day or yeah. the hour. No we don't know. know when Christ is returning. Right. And, you know, why should that stop us from doing what we normally should do anyway? Right. Because what does the Bible say? Contend for the faith. Do right. business till he comes. Yep. We're to go out there. We're to be spreading the gospel, doing whatever we can. And, uh, you know, it is true that the sun, moon, and stars were made for signs and seasons. But that, that doesn't say... But not say, for the uh, sign for, for a, of the end. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Different. Not for a sign of yeah. the end of the age when... when uh, God tells us no one knows. No one, no one knows, knows so. when it'll be. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a time when we least expect. He'll come as a thief in the night. Uh, so. come, yep, yep. And uh, Christ will return. So, yeah, it's interesting in this article, in this blog that Dr. 
Danny Faulkner wrote on our website. For instance, the total solar eclipse is generally visible somewhere on Earth about once every year and a half. Right. So I think because it happens to be in the a, U.S. In, in the US mm -hmm. And how, how often is it in the U.S.? Well, it just varies. There'll be another one. I think it's in like the mid 2020s. I think 2024 or 2025. There'll be another one here in the U.S. US. So a, a full solar eclipse. But I just want to make sure people know U.S. Mm -hmm. is not the world. I know you play the World Series. Right, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> because the you play the World Series. Uh, I, you think it's you know the yeah, center of the world. It isn't. And I also know when you study world history in America, it includes all fifty states. But we just need. Well, <laughs> world history better cover more than the fifty states. <laughs> well, when I talk to people about Australian history, when did Captain Cook sail up the east coast of Australia? People in America don't even know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, that's sad. You it know, is. But the point is that, uh, yeah, it just happens to be in America mm -hmm. this year. But there's been other uh, solar eclipses, as you said, generally is visible somewhere on the Earth once every year and a half. Yeah. So it's not that it's that rare. It's just right. rare in America. Right. right. Sometimes right. it may be even just over an ocean where there's no, and there's no people. So, so we got our glasses. Can... We're ready. Yeah. Some of you, We're it's ready. already past your area. Yeah, uh, it and, would be. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, some of you have probably been watching it on the NASA, uh, NASA yeah. website. Uh -huh. They've had it live yeah. up there. They've got it live. So, uh, so all lots right. Of good stuff. Okay. Um, this next article is from the National Catholic Register Abortion Pill Reversal, the Next Frontier of Informed Consent Laws. So basically, they're doing, they've done some preliminary testing on a pill that if a woman takes it, so. Apparently, with the the um, the RU486, it's a two pill combination, and RU486 is the abortion causing pill. So it's not just one pill though. You take it in two segments, and if you take this abortion pill reversal pill in between those two, if you just take the first RU486 and then this, it can reverse and not cause the child to abort. Um, at least some preliminary studies have shown that. And I'm sure that those who are very much adamant about abortion don't even want such a pill to exist. Nope. They, because they don't want that. They don't want you even talking about it yet. They're like, well, the results are really preliminary, so we shouldn't even be, you know, but this is pretty important. And, and for women who have second thoughts about it, it is an opportunity for them to um, stop that from happening. And it's interesting, to. even in this article, it says the second pill is ingested to expel, this is for that, uh, mm -hmm. that abortion yeah, pill, to, to yeah. expel the deceased unborn child. Mm -hmm. So they're child. Even ref <laughs> that, this article is even referring to it as a child. Right, well, let's hope not, since it's from the National Catholic Register. <laughs> they would, they would, they would because agree. Because it is a child. Right, they agree it's a right. child, but it's everybody else that would say, oh, it's just a clump of tissues, you know, that's being Right expelled. at fertilization, mm -hmm. it's a child. It is, absolutely. And we've got to remember 100%. that. When, when you have the fertilized egg, mm -hmm. unique combination of information, that's yeah. when you become you. You. And yeah. there's no more information added. Right. And mm -hmm. so abortion is killing human beings. That, that's why I still say, you know, when you look at Romans 1, the wrath of God right. uh, against those who reject him, and he turns people over to their depraved natures. Mm -hmm. We see that happening in this nation. Yeah. You can't kill, murder 55 million children right. by abortion mm -hmm. since just 1973, and God stand back and, and okay. just let oh, okay. man do that. Yeah. I mean, look what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Look what happened at the time of the flood. Yeah. Uh, God is a God who is, is long suffering, mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. he is a holy God too. Right. And we're all accountable. Right. And so we've got to remember that. But yeah, this is uh, an interesting article. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that it might, I mean, for that it, if it's available and women know about it, that it might have some opportunities to prevent an abortion from being successful. So that's a good, that's always a good thing. Okay, this next article sort of reminds me of horror movies, <laughs> right? Fra Frankenstein, Frankenstein horror movie. Uh, Frank, can, hey, we, we should do, maybe we should do a uh, dinosaur movie um, <laughs> on uh, uh, the Frankenstein dinosaur or something, yeah. something like that. Yeah, they're calling it a Frankenstein dinosaur because they think it's sort of a missing link. So it, they think it's just like Frankenstein was kind of cobbled together from different things or different people or whatever. This thing they feel like is sort of cobbled together. It's a bunch of different 
um, sort of dinosaurs, but they, they think it's a missing link. They say it's a missing link, but uh, it, it may, I mean, if it's all, if all these bones are from the same creature, and I mean, they have made mistakes in the past, and they've oh, yeah. made mistakes in putting things together in the past. Mm -hmm. We've got to mm -hmm. remember that. Mm -hmm. But if it's a mosaic, why would that be any different to what we see today? The platypus yeah. is a mosaic. Right, we have that. You know, mm -hmm. it's what, bill like a duck, and beaver like tail, and mm -hmm. hair like a... Yeah. Bear, web feet like an otter and claws yeah. like a reptile, lays eggs like a turtle, mm -hmm. feeds a jungle milk like a mammal, <laughs> has spurs like a rooster, poison like a snake. Isn't that a mosaic? Yeah, it's, it's a major mosaic. Or, and, and this one's called Chiliosaurus. Um, and they think it's sort of, because it has the hips of a stegosaurus and the arms and body of a T-Rex. So they just, they didn't know where it fit in the family tree. So now they're thinking that it's a link sort of between the, the carnivorous dinosaurs and the, um, the herbivores. So that's where they're kind of starting to put it. They've sort of redrawn the family tree um, to put that in there and to make that work. And so. they're rewriting, yeah, rewriting the evolution uh, mm -hmm. tree. Right. In other words, you know, we see this all the time doesn't matter what animal it is, they're trying to yeah. rewrite evol the evolutionary history. Oh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. We, we, we it think work. it was like this. And then even this article says, well, even though they've rewritten this dinosaur evolutionary tree, others don't agree with them. Right. And, 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 and again, what it is, they're taking the story, which is a fairy tale of evolution, right. applying it to the evidence, and they're all trying to come up with different ways and means of trying to fit evidence they find mm -hmm. into that. Now, people would accuse us of doing the same. They say, well, you take right. the Bible and you uh, go out and look at the evidence, we'll say, yeah, but the evidence directly fits with what the Bible oh, says yeah. concerning yeah. creation, concerning uh, the flood, concerning right. the Tower of Babel. It directly fits. It explains that. And, it's and observational consistent. science I always say it's it. absolutely, it's what we would expect to see, right. and it's what we see. One of the um, lines in here, though, <laughs> One of the scientists said, eventually we'll arrive at a consensus. I think this is a step toward the right model. <laughs> and so, but are they ever going to arrive at a consensus? Because they don't know what happened in right. the past. And they're right. still finding these fossils, it's, it's, still trying to make it. It's really it fit, admitting so. that evolution is a belief. Right. And they, right. they want to say, well, this is what we think the evidence you know, how in it should be best arranged right for our right. belief. Mm -hmm. And we've always said, evolutionists need to acknowledge they have beliefs about the past, but right. they, they yep. won't. They, they try to make out, oh no, it's not a belief, it's not a religion. It is. It Evolution's is. a religion. Evolution yeah. uh, is a belief. Absolutely. So, all right, what's uh, the next one here? All right, the next one comes from the new scientist. CRISPR makes piglets that may be better organ donors for humans. Now, we've been talking a lot about CRISPR on here. It seems like there's an article about every other week about it. And I like to bring those to people's attention because there's been a lot of concern and scare about the CRISPR technology, which um, it's one of those things I want people to understand. It could be used for bad and it could be used for good. Um, and, and, and so the problem is, is that a lot of scientists don't have a Christian worldview or a biblical worldview. And so I understand the concern about it because it, we shared an article, I don't know if, I think it was last week, about it being involved in human genetic editing for the first time um, and editing out some mutations. And so there is concern about it. So what, what they're saying is they're, they're trying to eliminate the potential of these viruses that can, you know, in, if you transplant organs from pigs into humans. Right that viruses could cause cancer and other diseases right, and so on. There are these things called endogenous retroviruses. Humans have them and so do pigs, but they're different. And so the fear is that if you put a human, if you put a pig organ into a human being, that those, those viruses that are in the DNA, in the cells, in the organ will jump out and maybe cause problems for um, human beings and cancer and things like that. So can, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we didn't talk about this, you know, up, we usually do a little bit of talking about yeah. the articles before we mm -hmm. do the live program. But um, why is it, okay, so they're looking at pigs and I know they even use pig valves now. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, because Buddy natural, Davis, our singer right, and yep. dinosaur sculptor, mm -hmm. had a pig valve put in and mm -hmm. then, then it eventually wore out and you have right. to have another pig valve in. Yeah. But they use, and they're talking about using organs from pigs. But according to evolution, we're supposedly closely related to the apes. Mm -hmm. Why don't they use organs from apes? Why is it pigs? Do you, do you know the answer? Well, to that? I, I would say this. It's probably twofold. One, because there is a greater, because we are more closely evolutionarily related, according to them, there's more of a fear that certain viruses and things would be more likely to infect mm -hmm. us and cause problems. And because most chimps, apes are given human-like status. So to kill them 
and and use their organs or breed them for those purposes would just be a no. So no animal way. rights activists would probably be very oh, upset they be with using totally apes. up in arms. Yeah. But pigs is okay. Pigs are okay because their organs are actually similar in size to our organs, and that's but, why they're used. So a pig's more distant related, it's still a mammal. Um, yeah, but it's inconsistency, it right? Is. I mean, because it's okay to kill this ancestor, but not <laughs> not that one. That's, that's what I was wondering because I've often wondered that. Why? Mm -hmm. Why is that? So. Yeah, it's just because I think there's more of a fear of because we are more closely related genetically and all of those things supposedly that there might be more of a fear of the viruses infecting them and us disease but then also because it just there's no they but, hardly allow re research on but the interesting anymore. thing is they're happy to kill millions of children in their oh, mother's yeah. wombs yeah right that's okay that's the irony the, of it uh, the inconsistencies are mm -hmm. just so glaring yeah. just really so glaring. Are. Are. so in so, the future it's possible you might have a pig heart and a pig. Right. Well, pig. they'll take the viruses. They've been able to now take the viruses, basically use this technology to take the viruses out of the pig cells. And so you have these pigs that um, basically have organs that are more that, with DNA that don't have those viruses. And that's a good thing. That's a good use of it. And I hope they can continue that because there is an organ shortage. So that would be a good thing. Okay. This next one is really interesting. <laughs> uh, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, mammals took to the skies. So, it's so like, dinosaurs oh. supposedly evolved, and right. there were some mammals there that said, "Uh oh, we're going to get eaten. We better take we're off." Go, and take so off. they said, "Let's invent, let's invent uh, wings, or let's invent, uh, yeah, or those that or, could, or, or, or right, gliding mechanisms, right." Those that could fly or somehow glide probably did better than ones that couldn't. So they're the ones that survived and continue to um, evolve so, and grow. But. So this particular article is actually all about the fact that they found this fossil, supposedly 160 million years mm -hmm. old, yep. which fits right in the time of the dinosaurs. Right. And shock of shock, it sort of looks like... <laughs> A squirrel. A flying squirrel. A today. flying squirrel. We yeah. have flying squirrels today, right? Yes, we do. They don't have wings. They glide. No, right? they glide. Yeah, just Membranes like there are, and... there are possums in Australia, mm -hmm. you know, the gliding possum that'll, that'll, mm. that'll glide. Yeah. Um, so it looks like a squirrel. Right. It seems to have, have a mechanism to glide evidence, like a squirrel. Do you think it was a squirrel? Um, from the fossil evidence, it appears to have some sort of membranes that, mm -hmm. that you know, extend it between its, um, whatever, its front legs and its back legs. Which so it does squirrels appear, Right, today. it does appear to be some sort of flying and, um, animal. And, and it's interesting, in this article, they're shocked because mm -hmm. they're saying, we're now finding that uh, in recent years, for instance, scientists have significantly revised the story I'm glad they called it a story, because <laughs> that's what it is, a story. Yep. Mammals already had evolved into a staggering range of forms, fossil evidence shows, foreshadowing the diversity of mammals today. Because they, supposedly, reptiles evolved into birds and evolved into mammals, right? right? Now they're finding at the time of the dinosaurs, what they call the time of the dinosaurs, right. there are all these mammals that were already there. Right. Well, and what's, what's interesting to me, it says there must have been some benefit that drove the repeated evolution of gliding. Because what they're saying is it wasn't just this gliding mechanism evolved many times over. So what gets me about that is it's hard enough for evolution to do this by random chance once. Now you're saying it's, it's had to do it multiple times because you see it in multiple branches of the mammal family. And so it's, you know, so soaring kept them out of harm's way. So that's why they evolved that, you know, to keep them safe from the dinosaurs eating them. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it just, it gets ridiculous. Yeah. And today it, it, they even say, uh, there must've been some benefit that drove right. the repeated evolution of gliding. How come, how come, you know, you got sugar gliders, you know, you got right. possums that glide, you mm -hmm. got squirrels that glide. Right. Uh, how, how come this started to evolve over and over and over again? There had to be some reason for it. Could it right. be that they were created and designed that mm -hmm. way in the first place? But you know yeah. what else is very, very interesting? You know how the secularists will mock at us for believing that dinosaurs live with people? Right. Oh, how stupid that dinosaurs right. live yeah. with people. You know, that is ridiculous. And they make out that, you know, you are so anti-intellectual and anti-science if you believe dinosaurs live with people. I mean, that's the most ridiculous notion you could right. ever have. But here's the interesting thing. According to evolutionists, there's the chambered nautilus. Mm -hmm. it's it supposedly lived before dinosaurs with yep. dinosaurs lives today the coelacanth fish mm -hmm. there's another example uh or the horseshoe crab mm -hmm. in fact you know what i did what? i did a bit of research uh -huh. let me read to you animals that they have now found in the fossil record mm -hmm. uh, that they've confirmed 
Good. that according to evolutionists are in the same rocks as what they dinosaurs. would date as dinosaur age rocks, mm -hmm. live with dinosaurs, and see if you recognise any of them as, okay. as living today. You ready? Rabbits, squirrels, well, we're talking about the squirrels. Yeah. Hedgehogs, beavers, possums, shrews, parrots, owls, penguins, flamingos, albatross, ducks, cormorants, sandpipers, loons, frogs, salamanders, box turtles, boa constrictors, iguanas, lizards, alligators, crocodiles, lobster, crayfish, eels, sharks, sardines, dragonflies, beetles, mayflies, crickets, cockroaches, butterflies. How about that? So lots of things, including mammals and birds at the same time. All of those live today of beside yeah. people, yeah. right? Right. And as well as the horseshoe crab and the mm -hmm. coelacanth mm -hmm. and uh, the chambered nautilus, and there, right. are, there are others. Oh, sure. And yet, according to evolutionists, they live with dinosaurs, and right. it's okay for them to live with people, but not dinosaurs live with people. Yeah. And that's yeah. because they believe dinosaurs evolved into birds and evolved right. into um, a uh, sequence, yeah. in, into mammals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they became extinct as part of the evolutionary story. Right. It's because of their story that they try to mock you if you believe dinosaurs. Well, and, and a lot of the times they won't even like even when they do find these fossils in the dinosaur layers they didn't even really like do much with them or think much about them because they don't they don't they shouldn't be there according right. to evolution. so they ignore them but so they ignore them but they're a lot finding of so many now they can't ignore i them. know and it's interesting that uh they were they were shocked when they found it looks like a squirrel yeah oh, <laughs> it looks my. like it could even well, glide because it is wow. so. notice they never called it a squirrel in the article they just oh, said yeah. it's a squirrel like yeah yeah, yeah. All right, this next one comes from Life Site News. If you want to end white supremacy, start with Planned Parenthood. So obviously we've had a lot of these talks about race and, you know, um, tearing down statues and, and uh, white supremacy that's been going on here in the U.S. And so what this article brings out, which I think is very interesting, is that um, really if you want, really what we need to start with is Planned Parenthood because... Planned Parenthood. What's, what's Planned Parenthood got to do with racism? Wait a minute. Isn't Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood just women's health? Yeah, women's health. That term's been used very loosely, shall we say? Um, but it's the thing is, is a lot of Planned Parenthood facilities are located in minor in neighborhoods where there are typically people that are diff not Caucasian. And so it's interesting, like, why are they mainly there? Why aren't they, if they're really about just women's health, why shouldn't, why wouldn't they be everywhere? Mm -hmm. Why would they only be in these select locations? Because Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a eugenicist. Okay, explain, explain what that means. I think this is really important for people mm -hmm. to understand. The founder of Planned Parenthood was a eugenicist. In other words, she was a racist. Yes. Well, yeah, that was, was part prejudiced. of her eugenics. Eugenics means well-born. And so the idea is that basically only European whites are the well-born ones and everybody else should be eliminated or decreased. She actually believed that? Yeah. I mean, you can find it in her writings. Her writings are freely available online. See, see, Planned Parenthood wouldn't want that stuff getting out today, would they? No, and they, and they don't talk a lot about it. If you go to their website today, they'll talk about Sanger, but they won't talk about that aspect, you know, that, that So if people part of it. had dark skin, she considered them inferior? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And therefore you get rid of them? Mm -hmm. You abort them? Yeah. For instance. Or somehow, or prevent them from being born prevent in the them first from place. Being, or, or sterilization right. to stop them having yeah. children. She actually yeah. believed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. And that, that's well documented. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, and, and so it's, and against anybody who was diseased, I mean, it didn't just stop with people that weren't Caucasians. Right. It was pretty much so Down if syndrome you were poor, people, for instance, were, or yeah, yeah. anyone who has diseases or genetic problems or, or some sort of deformity. What they would consider what they called imbeciles or morons. I mean, you know, which is very vaguely defined. If you were deaf, if you were blind, any, any type of um, abnormality, you were considered not not well born basically so 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 eugenics was really the reason that planned parenthood was formed well it was oh yeah absolutely i mean it was i mean and the sexual liberation to give women freedom you know to not have be burdened down with children and it was very much her thinking as a socialist and as a eugenicist so yeah. And so that's why this particular article says if you want to end right. white supremacy start with planned parenthood right cuz that's what they're trying to do that's what is, they're and, and still doing today. It's quieter. It's more careful. They're not being as um, outspoken about it, but they're still very much doing it. Well, the it. author here says, uh, it says, yes, the nation's leading abortion chain birthed in eugenic racism and elitism. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, says they've been tweeting about Charlottesville and bringing an end to white supremacy, and, and the author says, ah, <laughs> that would be like Planned Parenthood wanting to bring an end to pornography, or Ashley Judd wanting to bring an end to nasty, foul feminist rants. Right. So, you know, it just goes to, it just goes to show uh, if, if people really understand the foundation what of Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. I, I, how inconsistent of them right. to be tweeting about what was happening in Charlottesville. Right. Yeah. And We're then she goes on this article and says, Planned Parenthood kills over 260 unarmed black lives every day in America, yeah. uh, yet the left praises them. Yeah. And actually, they're not black because nobody's black. No, nobody's well, black. Yet they mean dark shade right. people. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely a bias in that area, oh, isn't yeah. there? Because oh, that, yeah. that's where most of those Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. uh, clinics yeah. are. By far. So yeah. she says uh, um, here as well, um, but I hate the shedding of innocent blood even more regardless of the hue of the abort aborted. I hate right. racism, she says, but she hates the shedding of innocent blood. What she means yeah. is... Uh, because nobody's innocent. Right. I mean, we're all sinners. Yeah. Uh, but totally. what she means is, yeah, I hate racism, but I even hate more than that, the murder of children. Of children. And as I've said before, really, abortion is child sacrifice. Right, it is. It, it, it's, it's a mother sacrificing their child to the God of self because right. they're selfish mm -hmm. about themselves. Yeah, the God of convenience. So it's so. very sad. Okay, so this next article, um, and it's called, uh, or entitled, Study Finds Many White Nationalists Are Upset About Their Genetic Ancestry Test Results. <laughs> I had to kind of laugh when I read this because basically what it is is a lot of these white supremacists and, and white supremacist groups, the people in them have been getting genetic testing done because now you can do that and find out what your ancestry is. They're not 100% yeah, accurate. I, I see the ads on TV. Is it Ancestry.com? Ancestry.com, 23andMe is another th organization that does it. And you can it. send your DNA you in. You can send your, yeah, your D, you send basically cells in, they extract the DNA, and they can tell you, based on genetic studies that we've already done, kind of what well, percentage you are. If you, you did are. that and you found out that you are partly Australian, what would you do then? <laughs> well, I don't know, Ken, that would be bad. <laughs> So uh, anyway, but so, so these white supremacists are finding out that they're not like mostly European. They're, they're some European, but some of them are also sub-Saharan African, which is like, right? That's the most, that's the worst thing to them possible. Um, and, and basically someone did a study on this, looking at white supremacists white supremacy websites and forums where people would comment uh -huh. on this and how upset they were um, about the results. <laughs> upset to find that, hey, w we could be related to people from Africa with yeah. dark skin and mm -hmm. they're all upset about that. And then they they're are. saying, so there must be some mistakes, aren't they? Some accusing? of them are saying there's a conspiracy. Some of them are saying the results just aren't accurate. And yeah, when it doesn't fit what you want, yeah, then you're willing to say See, anything From a perspective it. of the Bible, though, God makes Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve has sons and daughters. By the yeah. time of Noah, right? There could have been millions of people, oh, sure. but eight people went on the ark, they come off the ark, they increase in number to the Tower mm -hmm. of Babel. God gives different languages. As those family groups split up from each other, move away from each other, mm -hmm. then depending on who marries who and over right. time and people could move to closer to each other and mm -hmm. this could marry this group and this mm -hmm. person go off on their own and yeah. uh, this one marry someone from this group and go off there. And So you'd expect, you, you wouldn't be surprised to find all sorts of mixtures. Oh, There's yeah. been a separation out, mm -hmm. but all sorts of mixtures as well, mm -hmm. depending on who married who, who went with who, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, we're going to be doing an article actually on that for Answers Magazine coming up, so on some of that DNA testing, so it's going to be really neat. Okay, so we need people that. to keep sending those emojis across the screen, yeah. and uh, let us know your comments and your questions and where you're from, and uh, even though we're out right now, right, right now, now, looking, now, looking our, with ooh. our glasses on, uh, at the eclipse here in Kentucky, <laughs> and we don't know what the clouds are going to well, be like, we'll see. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go out there and see. So, All right. okay. So this next one is from LifeSite News as well. It says, Pastor, we need to offer compassion, not acceptance, to transgender kids. So basically what happened was this is in Spokane, Washington, and this pastor wrote a sort of a letter to the editor about this and really clarifying that Christians don't hate um, transgender transgender people. They don't hate LGBTQI, whatever. They don't hate those people. Um, we want to, we don't, 
we agree that their, their lifestyle is a sin and the choices they make are sinful, but we want them to know the love of Christ and we want them to know the gospel. And so he wrote this article on that. And man, I tell you, the Here, here's an inter- interesting thing to me. Because he wrote this article, and it was published, right, in a Spokane, Washington paper. Uh, paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, the backlash, mm-hmm. and he was acute. The backlash was hate against this pastor, right? right? This pastor is saying we need to have compassion Passion. on transgender, but from right. a biblical perspective, mm-hmm. you know that is not how God created us. We right. created male yeah, and female. female. And so he said, but we need to have compassion on them, even mm-hmm. though building our thinking on the Bible, we would say transgender is wrong, that that's right. sin. Oh, yeah. But nonetheless, we need to have compassion right. for them. We and that's how we as Christians act. Mm-hmm. But then the hate that comes against them. Mm-hmm. It's the same as when we lit up the ark with the rainbow. And right. I said, we're taking the rainbow back because God gave us the meaning of the rainbow 4,300 years ago. And a lot of these LGBT supporters and that got on my Twitter and they made all these hate comments against yeah. me. Yeah. It's interesting. When we disagree with those who uh, stand for you know, gay marriage right. or transgender what goes or, against the Bible. you know, whatever goes against the Bible. Mm-hmm. When we disagree with them, they accuse us of hate. And when they accuse us of hate, they, they use hate bill statements yeah. to accuse us of hate and show their hate mm-hmm. of us. Yeah. It's a, but you know what? Knowing the, the sinful heart of man, the heart of man right. is deceived above all things and desperately wicked, we shouldn't be surprised. Right, right. Yeah. We, we yeah. Hey, so, I, but I, I think it's a good article, hopefully helping people understand where Christians really stand on this and how we want to help people. I, I have a suggestion because okay. we're getting right to the end here. And because okay. today is the eclipse day, okay. why don't we jump okay, to we'll the jump article to uh, dealing with uh, the voyage of the Voyager, Voyager probe. So yeah. from, from, from phys.org, from the edge of the solar system, Voyager probes are still talking to Australia after 40 years. So it's pretty cool. When I read the article, I had no idea that these probes, that they, the Voyager probes that they sent out into space were still sending back signals, giving us information about the universe and what's out there, our solar system. Well, do you know, do you know what was interesting to me? When you realize um, how much power... Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that uh, is involved here. This, how weak the signals are. The fact that we can uh, detect that. Detect well, they even those. built. They even um, expanded dishes the, to. They said, due to their respective distances, tens of billions of kilometers from home, the single strength from both spacecraft is very weak. Only one tenth of a billion trillionth of a watt. Can you imagine that? I know. One it's tenth very, of a billion millionth of yeah. a. a a billion trillionth of a right. watt. And yet, we, in Australia, this shows you how advanced Australians are, see. In Australia, they have these big dishes. They're able to actually get those signals, and they right. can still communicate with the Voyager spacecraft. Yeah, it's amazing. They even expanded the dish in Australia, so they, cause they're they located in the right area, right. basically, to get the signal. But what's really funny, too, is that the um, these two spacecraft, the two Voyager probes, they had an eight-track tape deck to record data and 256 kbs of memory <laughs> which we have more than that just on our phones even today yeah, you know and it, it was you know good it's for old, the it's time. old technology it's still oh, going yeah. old technology yeah. and it's still working but the other interesting thing is and i believe carl sagan had a lot to do with this mm-hmm. uh they said on both spacecraft they placed a golden record similar in concept to a vinyl record featuring one and a half hours of world music and greetings to the universe in 55 different languages because when they first did this in the 70s they put this record on there and there's even pictures of of, of a man and a woman Mm -hmm. and and uh, sort of a map showing where we are in the solar system and you know and that sort of thing and our galaxy and then it's basically greetings to the aliens out there we Mm -hmm. want you to find us and that was the whole idea that oh this will be great because we'll if aliens contact. find this yeah. we'll make contact yeah well you know what's interesting uh georgia um <laughs> uh, there was an article that just came out mm-hmm. and it was headed aliens could conquer earth by following dangerous maps nasa foolishly sent into space <laughs> and so Oops. at the same time they're saying isn't this great we can still communicate with voyager and they're saying right. the voyager had these maps on there and and these messages for the aliens out there that was a whole idea in the 70s mm-hmm. and that, and now they're saying we're really worried because stephen hawkins said if we make contact with aliens they might find us and come and conquer well, us right how do we know they're <laughs> friendly aliens they might be unfriendly so now now they probably want to blow up the voyager Probably. Space 
spacecraft because we don't want aliens finding finding this. They'll know where we are. They'll come and conquer us. I'm personally not worried. <laughs> so, and by the way, if you want this article, we'll uh, we'll get our social media team to give a link to that particular article separately because it wasn't the original list. Yeah. I just found it this morning. Yeah, thought, that's pretty uh, funny. That was very so. very funny. So, right. um, okay, so, so send all the emojis across the screen at yeah. the end here, and we're, we're going gonna, to see the we're going out to uh, so. see the eclipse mm -hmm. and uh, see what's happening uh, out there. Yeah. And hopefully uh, we'll have good weather. We'll be back on we'll be back on Thursday, Thursday. and we'll we'll be live. Okay. Yeah. We will here, be live that uh, day. With our studio I think Bodhi audience. will be back. Uh, Bodhi so, will be back. Yep, All three of we'll us will be, be back. So. Okay. So with we're, that, we're signing signed. off. Hi, and welcome to Answer.